when you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me you think the scriptures give you eternal life but actually the scriptures are my testimony that's what jesus is saying so the scriptures are given to us to profit in doctrine which is teaching in reproof which is the evidence of jesus there is no other place to learn about jesus other than in the scriptures no other place there is no other place you know so um we confine ourselves to the doctrine of scripture as it regards the revelation of the person of the christ and then it is also for correction as you grow in knowledge and grace you begin to correct you get corrected by the scriptures especially those of us that came from religion and came from religious background lack of teaching backgrounds where we never had doctrine and so we formed our mindsets and formed our opinions on what christianity should be on how christianity should be on what salvation should be on how salvation should be and so we came up with a mindset that has been consolidated over the years so now as you begin to hear the doctrine of scripture the doctrine of scripture begins to go against the things you learned over the years so you must be flexible enough to allow the scriptures correct you you don't correct the scriptures the scriptures are to correct you so that's why the scriptures are given to us for correction and for instructions in righteousness not for instructions for righteousness these instructions are not instructing us for righteousness they are instructing us in because we are already righteous so since we are already righteous the instructions of scripture is within our nature of righteousness for instructions in righteousness that the man of god may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto every good work can i hear your amen so the scriptures speak for itself you don't look for evidence from anywhere else to validate the scripture your dream is not enough to ev to give evidence to the scripture your vision is not enough to give evidence to the scripture that's why some time ago because of lack of doctrine particular women started saying they died and went to heaven and came back on earth with a message from god as the last warning to the church you know and, and gullible christians even mega denominations opened their doors to those fallacies because of lack of doctrine and they came in with their so-called visions and said that when they died they went to heaven and when they went to heaven a lot of women were in hell because they didn't cover their because they didn't cover their hair and because they palmed their hair so they went to hell so now the entire framework of salvation has been attributed to what somebody has done and churches were gullibly allowing those women because of lack of doctrine when people are not established in doctrine anything goes anybody can just wake up with malaria and tell you the dream they had and call it a vision so every revelation and i don't care who is the person with that revelation every revelation and every vision is subject to the authority of god's word god's word does not require external validation it validates itself the scriptures validate itself it's been tried through the fire seven times the scripture is infallible authentic and irrevocable word of god infallible it is authentic it is irrevocable even god himself has subjected himself to the scriptures forever oh god is settled in heaven uh, you know you can't improve on the scriptures so you can only believe the scriptures for what the scripture says by faith we all accepted the scriptures by faith for he that cometh to god you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him that's why it's very dangerous to exchange the scriptures with your experience it's very dangerous to subject the scriptures to your experience just because somebody's father died of stroke the uncle died of stroke the grandfather died of stroke then they now tell the brother in christ that he has a generational cause and that it will soon happen to him it is very dangerous because that is subjecting the entire work of christ to a family experience so we've got to stay within the confines of the authority the irrevocable irreversible doctrine of god's word and when you stay with the word of god let your experience be liars let god alone be true am i teaching here
the scriptures are given to us to form our doctrine somebody shout i believe in the doctrine of scripture i didn't hear your amen so the book of hebrews chapter 2 tells us hebrews chapter 2 as it regards the doctrine of salvation therefore we ought to give them all earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by, by them that heard? Lest at any time we let them sleep. Actually, the original text is supposed to be, lest at any time we drift away. The scriptures don't sleep. It is we that drift away. Lest at any time we drift away when it regards the work of salvation you know uh, the word of god tells us that the only way to escape the old testament or the law is salvation so god's escape route from the law and his demands is salvation the bible tells us in the book of second peter chapter 3 verse 15 when peter was summarizing the entire writing and work of apostle paul he said an account that the long suffering of our lord is salvation the long suffering of our lord is salvation even as our beloved brother paul also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you so so great salvation is so great because it is great salvation is the work of the savior salvation is not the work of the saved salvation is the absolute total work of the savior the saved has no contribution to make in their salvation the savior did all the work so salvation is of the lord salvation is of who is of the lord man is not the savior jesus is the savior jonah chapter 2 verse 9 salvation is of the lord the book of hebrew says it like this salvation comes from yahweh salvation comes from yahweh which is god you are the receiver of salvation man has no single contribution to salvation his only contribution to salvation is sin the only contribution man can make to salvation is sin so the contribution man has made to salvation is sin because it is that sin that required salvation no other contribution so salvation is purely of the lord hundred percent somebody shout a good amen now yesterday we got into where we began to deal with all that book of revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3 and we got into you know the, the works of john and all of that and i'd like to just show you a scripture there before we shoot tonight first john chapter 5 verse 1 who is he that overcometh whosoever believeth that jesus is the christ is born of god and everyone that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him verse 4 for whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith verse 5 who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that jesus is the son of god somebody shout i believe that jesus is the son of god so we saw from the book of revelation that when god kept speaking through uh, john the beloved he kept saying to them he that overcome it he that overcome it he that overcome it in the seven churches all the individuals that were addressed the address to the individual apart from the judgment of god on those institutions and like we said salvation is not an institutional thing it's a personal thing and so when god spoke to the institution then he spoke to the individuals and to the individuals he said he that overcome it then the same john now said who is he that overcome it so we understand what he was talking about he that overcome it and he said he that overcome it is he that believed that jesus is the son of god can i hear your amen revelation chapter 1 verse 4 look at in between all of this discussion the way john put it john to the seven churches which are in asia grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne next verse and from jesus christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead 
and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood so he has already told you that the people is going to be addressing apart from the judgment on the institution among them there are people already that are washed there are already people that are sanctified and that's why when i was teaching yesterday i told you that the churches in revelation were a mixture of believers and unbelievers so the writing to the churches was a writing to a group of people that were antichrist in doctrine apostasy had entered and believers among them and that is why all of those seven churches none of them is in existence today all of them extinguished because they had gone into apostasy but the believers among them overcame are we together here they overcame they overcame because they believed that jesus is the son of god look at revelation chapter 5 verse 8 and when he had taken the book the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors which are the prayers of the saints and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou was slain and has redeemed us to god by thy blood out of every kindred and every tongue and people and nation there is no kindred on earth that will not be represented in heaven out of every kindred every language every dialect heaven is going to be full many of us are going there are we here if you're hearing say i hear you yeah and they sung a new song and said he has redeemed us to god by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation so he was speaking to believers look at the next verse verse 10 and has made us unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth you know sometimes when you read the book of revelation except the metaphors and the oxymorons and all the figures of speech are interpreted to you there you just be thinking that that book is just one dreadful book that deals with only end time events but that's not the truth I have told you before that when you read the book of the bible let the book name itself let the book tell you what the book is saying don't think what the book is saying don't think what the book should be saying let the book tell you what it is saying so this book of revelation self with all of all these big big deals what is the book of revelation about it's about jesus past present and future it's not about 666 it's not about one world government it's about jesus past present and future how do we know that revelation chapter 1 verse 1 the revelation of who help me power citizens one to go the revelation again the revelation so the entire book of revelation is the revelation of jesus christ so when you read revelation don't be looking for monsters look for jesus i'm teaching here when you read revelation don't be looking for thunder and lightnings and brimstone and fire look for jesus in revelation look at it the, the revelation of jesus christ which god gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass and is sent and signified by his angel unto his servant john this was the revelation of jesus given to john about jesus past jesus present jesus future I mean it's very clear then look at the next verse you will love you will love this who bore record of the word of god and of the testimony of who jesus christ and of all things that he saw next verse blessed is he that readeth have we read revelation we are blessed he didn't say blessed is he that memorizes he said blessed is he any day just feel like being blessed take revelation read somewhere and close it thank you jesus blessed is he that read it just read it you're blessed anytime you read about jesus you are blessed even if you don't understand what you're reading as long as it's about jesus you're blessed <laughs> somebody getting excited shout a good amen you know blessed is he that read it and then i hear the words of this prophecy what is prophecy the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy so this is jesus and keep those things which are written therein for the time of this revelation is now so it's past present 
and future revelation of the Christ concealed in a book called Revelation and the book has a lot of figures of speech. Now take note, the believer is the one that has the intercessory ministry of Jesus. He is the one that has overcome. How did he overcome? By faith. By what? By faith. Also remember that what we concluded was that before the foundation of the world, in God's foreknowledge, his choice was that Jesus will die and be the intercessor for mankind. So anybody that believes in Jesus, your faith in Jesus makes you written in the book of life. So the book of life is not a book, it's the book of Jesus. When you believe in Jesus, automatically you confirm your name in the book of life. But if you do not believe in Jesus and the day of salvation is over, your names are deleted from the book because everybody on earth, his name is there until he chooses not to accept Christ when the gospel is presented to him. If we are on the same page, shout a good amen. Romans chapter 10 verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we what? Which we preach. So, what Jesus has done, our job is to receive. We only preach it, you hear it, and you receive it. You don't do anything to be saved. You just hear the message, you believe the message, and you are saved. Now, when Paul was writing the scripture to the, to the church at Rome, it was a subject he was discussing. What subject was he discussing that brought him into this discourse here? Romans chapter 10 verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they have been ignorant of God's righteousness. So the subject of discourse here was righteousness. They have been ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Legalism. When people think that they and Jesus are the ones that are doing salvation, they have a problem. Salvation is the complete work of God. He said they are ignorant of God's righteousness. That is why they think that by what they do, they can be righteous. They are ignorant of God's righteousness. So they go about establishing their own righteousness. Give me a message then. They don't seem to realize that this comprehensive setting things, right? That is salvation is God's business. And a most flourishing business it is. Heaven will be full of people. Oh. The business is a flourishing one. Not just flourishing but most flourishing. Are we together here? Right across the street, they set up their own salvation shops and noisily hawk their wares. After all these years of refusing to really deal with God on his terms, insisting instead on making their own deals, they have nothing to show for it. God said, let me save you. They said, no, let us save me. Let me and you save me. God said, okay, it can't work like that. So they left God and went across the street and opened their own salvation shop with their bell noisily hawking their wares. And at the end of the day, it amounts to nothing. That's the problem with religion. They tell you fast 100 days so you can be holier. Even if you die, you can be holier. The, the height of holiness is Jesus. Nobody can be holier than Jesus. Are we together here? Otherwise, if anybody can be holier than Jesus, Jesus didn't need to come. That person will have died for us. Nobody. And that Jesus, who is the holiest of all, Jesus, the holiest of all, has come to live inside you even before you were perfect. Even before you knew how to fast, he came to live inside you without any prerequisite. Is it now that you want to fast to help Jesus? Eternally saved. That's who you are. Amen. I said amen. He said they do not realize 
that this salvation business is God's business. Amen. <laughs> so Paul was dealing with salvation here. Was dealing with so when you hear righteousness, righteousness is is salvation. Adoption is salvation. Holiness is salvation, and all of it is God's business. I didn't hear your amen. Now take note: there is no selective salvation. Salvation is for all. The book of Romans, chapter ten, verse twelve. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. Over all is rich unto all. Salvation is for everybody. Jesus died for everybody. So whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever is for whosoever. Can I hear your amen? And the moment you accept Jesus, you are saved from judgment. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 tells us when we are dead in sins and trespasses, he had quickened us. Next verse. He has quickened us. We are in, in time past. You walked according to the cause of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he had loved us, even when we were dead in sins had quickened us together with christ we didn't quicken ourselves he quickened us salvation is god's hundred percent work am i am i communicating here so when you got saved you became a child of god a child of god a child of god now i want to open up something because sometimes when you talk about salvation people will say hey you are saved but you are not producing the works that show that you are saved all right so i want to deal with something in james chapter 2 james 2 18. yea a man say thou hast faith and i have works show me thy faith without thy works and i will show thee my faith by my works thou believest that there is one god thou doest well the devils also believe and tremble but will thou O vain man that faith without works is dead was not abraham our father justified by works when he had offered isaac his son upon the altar seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect and the scripture was fulfilled which saith abraham believed god and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of god you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only now legalistic people will throw this at you like like a grenade or a time set bomb they'll tell you but the bible say you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only and when they show you that scripture if you are not sound in doctrine you can go quiet because it's there in the scripture hey so what was james talking about here James was talking about the fruits that come out of the regenerated life. Not the fruit that produces the regenerated life. So when you see a reference, what did I teach you? When you read a New Testament scripture and it made a reference to an Old Testament scripture, what did I say you should do? You go to the original text. Okay. Now if you go to the original text, you will never find this thing. No matter how you look for it in, in the Old Testament, you will never find this combo. You will never find it till Jesus comes. There is no verse in the Old Testament that joined the justification of Abraham with the works of Abraham. There is no such works. Abraham was justified by faith in Genesis 15. He offered Isaac in Genesis 22. But when James was talking, he did jello rice. He carried Genesis 15 and 22 to mix it together and make it sound that Abraham offered Isaac and it was because he offered Isaac that he was justified. Are we teaching here? So when you go back, you find out that Abraham, first of all, believed God and it was counted to him for what? 
righteousness so he was righteous in chapter 15 so he was already a righteous man then in chapter 22 god now said take thy son thy only son whom you love to mount moriah so it was not the offering of isaac that made abraham righteous it's because he was righteous that he offered isaac i'm teaching good here but when you read james you won't see that james mixed it because he expected you as a good student of the bible to know what he's talking about to further buttress what i'm teaching you here the book of romans chapter 4 verse 1 what shall we say then that abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh had found for if abraham were justified by works he had whereof to glory but not before god if it was giving isaac on the altar that made abraham righteous then abraham should be bragging abraham should have something to boast about that means he earned his salvation but not before god because there's nothing abraham can do that can justify abraham before god he can brag before you but not before god are we together here next verse for what say of the scripture abraham believed god and it was counted unto him what did he do to be righteous he believed he believed verse 4 now to him that walketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of death if abraham had to do something to be righteous it wouldn't be grace it would be paying for something but abraham was not paying for anything because abraham fitting to pay for anything how much can you pay so abraham just believed and it was counted to him for righteousness look at verse 5 but to him that walketh not but believeth on him that justified the ungodly his faith is counted for what exactly for righteousness next verse even as david also described it the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness. Who is blessed here? Why are you blessed? Because God imputed righteousness on you without, then you are. So blessing is not buying car and house and money. Blessing is that God looked at you without any contribution and God says you're righteous. Any man that God call righteous is a blessed man. Whether you have a car or you are still using Legades Benz. Is there something like Legades Benz? Even if you are still on your Legades Benz, you are a blessed man and a man can have one million cars and no blessing because his sins are waiting for him but for you when god looks at you there is no record of sin he sees a righteous man where are the blessed people in this house tonight lift your hands and shout i am blessed because i am righteous by faith in what christ has done i didn't hear a powerful amen david also described the blessedness of the man unto whom god imputed lord jesus of mine, righteousness without works saying blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered in the old testament it was covered in the new testament is deleted wiped out rusticated eh? totally Huh? Huh? obliterated wiped out removed that is even if they look for it they can never find it it is not on record you are that person hallelujah i say you are that person somebody shall no record of sin against me in the presence of god i am as righteous as jesus i didn't hear your amen so have i taken care of that scripture have i taken care so what james was talking about there was that now that you are righteous you have to produce works that look like who you are if your brother is hungry don't ask him the last salary you got how did you spend it that you're hungry before end of month no that's it's not in your place if he's hungry give him to eat 
if your sister is naked and you have give her cloth to wear don't ask her don't tell her in the name of jesus did you say you are you are, you are cold cold is catching you metola badaga megede receive the fire of the holy ghost be warm be warm be warm be warm before she came to you she knew that she can pray for to be warm but she didn't pray to be warm she came to her sister okay so you give her cloth if you have amen he was talking about the love that flows out of a regenerated man where we're able to be a blessing to one another are we together here that's all james was dealing with there and he began to talk about the fact that when you produce works that look like who you are it further goes to establish in the minds of people the new life that you have that's what james was dealing with james wasn't saying that you have to do things to confirm your salvation no 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 there's nothing you can do to add to what christ has done what jesus did was more than enough if we're on the same chapter let your amen slap the devil amen. all right so let's get into something else tonight the works of salvation okay all right romans chapter 5 verse 8 but god commended his love towards us in that while we were yet seen as christ died for us next verse much more then being not justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him verse 10 for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to god by the death of his son much more i thought somebody would shout much more yeah much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life so he's talking about the futuristic salvation we have been saved we were saved we are being saved we shall be saved but in the epistles the past one is much more pronounced than the future one because the future one and the present salvation is established on the past salvation are we together here very important because i taught you that at the beginning i'm just trying to make sure that you 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 still have all of those foundations in place now i said that to say this romans chapter 6 verse 1 what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound that is a rhetoric question why is it a rhetoric question because in romans 5 21 he already said that as sin had reigned unto death even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by jesus christ our lord next verse what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound then paul now answered god forbid how shall we that are dead somebody shout i'm dead to sin yeah the believer is dead to sin the believer is not a sinner if you are a sinner you're not a believer if you're a believer you're not a sinner the believer is dead to sin and a dead man does not respond have you ever seen a dead man in a coffin somebody say ah look at his crooked nose and he sat up and said idiot don't talk to me like that next time then he lied back again if you see that will you still be standing there no it's a question will you still be standing there you will take off for your life because only god knows what kind of, of of setup that is that a man that has been declared dead sat up to answer somebody who said something and then laid up laid back you're a dead man you don't ever wake up when sin is concerned even if you're looking at sin you cannot respond and if you respond it is not it is not conscious it was an unconscious response it was an error you're a dead man the bible says you are dead did you see that is it in your doctrine that you are somebody say i'm dead to sin yeah. somebody say i'm alive to god see you can't be alive to sin and alive to god no you're either alive to sin or you're alive to god you're either dead to god or dead to sin which one are you dead to sin and alive to god if you are shot sin has no dominion over me because i'm dead let me ask all of you a question a man that is dead and you tell him idiot does he answer you so idiot has no dominion over the man because the man is dead no matter what you do he will respond and when you don't respond to somebody you make him small i don't know if i'm teaching here somebody say idiot stupid man idiot useless man 
You just look at him, keep quiet, and you walk away. It is the people around that are telling you something is wrong with you. Look at you. I even talking. Nobody is answering you. You look stupid before everybody. Because the person that can control himself and keep quiet and refuse to respond has dominion over the things you are saying. So because you are dead to sin, no matter what the devil does, you will not respond. Because you are dead. That's why then sin shall not have because you are not under the law. You are under grace. You are dead. Sin has lost its power. It has no grip over you anymore. Am I teaching here? Yeah. Verse 3 quickly. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Watch. Know ye not. Touch your neighbor. Say know ye not. Know ye not. In, in, in Pidgin Nigeria English, how do you say it? You know no say. You know no say that as many of us as we are baptized into Jesus Christ, we are baptized into what? So a dead man does not answer insult. So the next time you say stick of cigarette, you didn't see it. Because you're a dead man. The next time you see a, a bottle of alcohol that used to intoxicate you and make a fool out of you. You drink a lie down in the gutter. And you say, this bed is very comfortable. <laughs> the next time you see that bottle, you didn't see it. Sin has no dominion over you. Hey, hallelujah. You reign in life. You reign, you reign. Somebody shout, I reign in life. As many of us, how many of you are baptized into Jesus? What are you baptized into? Somebody say, I'm dead. Yeah. You're dead in Christ. You're dead in Christ. Dead to sin. Alive to God. Alive to God. A born again man is not a sinner. He's dead to sin. A born again man is dead to sin. A born again man is alive to God because the new man is created after God. After who? In righteousness and true holiness. It's important you know that. That's who you are. I said that's who you are. Look at verse 4. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so we also should walk where? In the newness of life. This is called identification. We died with him. We were buried with him. We rose with him. Identification. Alright. Next, next verse 4. If we have been planted together in the likeness of his death we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection it has already happened knowing this somebody say know this that's very important knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin knowing this is the same word for acknowledge it's the same word for acknowledge acknowledge epignosis exact knowledge knowing exactly what has happened in your life knowing exactly what has happened in your life amen look at the next verse for he that is dead is freed from what who is dead here who is free from sin here can i hear you shout a good amen look at verse 8 now if we be dead with Christ we believe that we shall also live with him 9 knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more that had no more dominion over him for in that he died he died unto sin once but in that he liveth he liveth unto God likewise reckon ye also the word reckon means acknowledge know this fact reckon acknowledge ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto god through jesus christ our life so the christian life is a christ is a life of acknowledging what has been done that the communication of your faith may be effectual how by the acknowledging it's a life of acknowledging Amen. Verse 12 of that same Romans chapter 6, verse 12. Let not sin therefore in your mortal body. Let not sin. That's the ongoing work of salvation. 
that's present salvation let not sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the laws thereof don't let it why because you are dead to it so since you are dead to it don't let it use your space hallelujah save from sin in the past tense of salvation you receive in the present tense of salvation you cooperate and in the future tense of salvation you receive past tense you receive what christ has done present tense you cooperate with what christ has done future tense you receive what christ has done the past tense the present tense of salvation the future tense of salvation you receive you receive you cooperate see i hear you and in cooperating what do you do you reckon what is reckon acknowledge i'm teaching good hallelujah and of course you know that the futuristic salvation is the salvation of the body that's a future work now so paul begins to talk about the present tense of salvation and he's talking about a brother in the church at corinth first corinthians chapter 5 let's look at it quickly because i want to deal with a few things also alongside first corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as is not much as named among the gentiles that one should have his father's wife and you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that had done this deed might be taken away from among you for i verily as absent in body but present in spirit i have judged already he didn't say god has judged he said i have judged already as though i were present concerning him that has so done this deed in the name of our lord jesus christ when you are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our lord jesus christ to deliver such a one unto satan for the destruction of the flesh not the destruction of his flesh not his flesh the flesh what is the flesh that bad habit you hand him over to satan so that that bad habit will be destroyed who is satan the word satan there is the word accusation hand him over to accusation not satan as in satan but let him be accused so that he will be embarrassed so that by that embarrassment and shame he will behave himself why will you do that for the flesh to be destroyed for that character that attitude to be destroyed that the spirit may be saved so even though he has that problem he is still saved you know what i mean even though he took his father's wife he snatched it from his father he is still saved his name is still written in the book of life he said but so that he will not cause more damage in the church okay imprison him do you know why they put people in prison to restrict their destruction that's why they confine them do you know why they are hung they put handcuffs on people so that their hands can be restricted from wounding themselves and wounding others so they put their hand like this then when they have total control over them and they have calmed down they remove it so take that brother that is becoming volatile uh, volatile in destructive tendencies within the brethren carry him put handcuffs on his hand and keep him where shame will catch him so that he will calm down then that attitude will die and then the brother still maintains his salvation isn't it wonderful are you understanding why well, a brother is busy borrowing money borrowing money borrowing money borrowing money and not refunding he has borrowed from 20 people in the church and he is so smart that as he has borrowed none of the 20 has been able to talk to one another he has walked his way around them like witchcraft time them well and all of them have given him the money and now they want to collect their money he's not paying and then before you know it, this one is dragging him before you turn another one is dragging 15 hands on the same brother so what do you do you restrict him you expose that character he is still a brother do you understand he is still what he's still a brother he's still born again the seed of god is still in him jesus is still living in him But you tame him so that he does not cause damage 
to the brethren and when he is disciplined after some time paul said take him back take him out of discipline so that the devil will not destroy him for we are not ignorant yes in second corinthians chapter 2 paul said oh yeah, yeah. record that brother fast fast oh yeah oh yeah is nigerian english for fast fast record that brother fast fast so that he will not be destroyed we are not ignorant exactly because he's still a brother he's still our brother now that is a brother that is not did not just do that as a mistake that is his lifestyle what about a brother that just mistakenly got into something wrong galatians chapter 6 verse 1 brethren if a man be overtaken in a fault ye which are spiritual restore such a one in the spirit of meekness considering yourself lest thou also be tempted so if a brother misbehave and he doesn't have an outstanding record of misbehavior we call him and rebuke him quietly pray for him and get him back to fellowship are we together here so paul gave measures for discipline in the church so that our life here can be comfortable so that we can live a life that is good with one another now those behaviors don't affect salvation but they affect our living am i teaching good because as far as sin is concerned it can never stand between you and god why jesus took care of that okay praise the lord i say praise the lord all right so um in first corinthians chapter 3 verse 13 he begins to talk about works every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is next verse if any man's work abide which are built thereupon he shall receive a reward if any man's work shall be burned he shall suffer loss but he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire that yet so as by fire what it means is that his salvation was by fire what fire jesus was exposed to the fire of god's judgment and because jesus has been judged for us when you receive jesus you have been saved by fire I don't know if you understand that okay so even our works and you know tomorrow i'm going to really get into salvation and rewards the rewards that will be given to people for different things tomorrow i will open up the reward system of god so that you begin to see yourself and see whether you fit into any reward or not and i'm going to tell you what will happen if you go to heaven and you don't have any reward because you can be in heaven and it's like you're in hell it's a serious matter hey i say hey are you excited about it do you want to know or i should leave that side how many of you are expecting a reward in heaven if you're expecting a reward wave your hand say i will be rewarded okay so tomorrow we shall find out how yeah, because it's important god didn't leave anything he didn't keep anything from us so that we from here we can already assess ourselves from here we can even tell what will happen when we get to heaven it's exciting it's exciting god is such a wonderful family man he has not kept anything from his family i didn't hear your amen can i hear a powerful amen all right so he talks about the fire of reward now i have told you there's a difference between reward and salvation you are saved but reward will come out of the works that you did after you were saved salvation is not a reward salvation is a gift but after you are saved by the gift of god you now do service in the kingdom which qualifies you for reward if you're with me say i hear the book of second corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 for we must all appear before the judgment seat of christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body in his body this body is not this body everything he has done in the body of christ that body there is the body of christ because whatever you're doing is in the body of christ and it is for the benefit of the body of christ because whatever you do is a service to the body of christ are we together here in his body according to that he had done whether it be good 
or bad that word judgment seat of christ is the word bima seat bima seat you know bima seat reward seat of christ because you see we shall not be judged with the world because we will be the ones to judge the world with christ according to first corinthians chapter 6 verse 1 to 3 can somebody shout hallelujah things done in the body like coming to church late you are doing something against the body yeah coming late to church you know gossiping in the church because your gossip is not building is destroying so that's something you're doing in the body and you will be judged backbiting you know backbiting where you have a group of people that you people among yourselves you have formed a nucleus in the church inside the body you people have decided to become a cancer in the body you know cancer carries itself to a location of the body and takes that location and owns it that's cancer you hear some people in the church they don't want to relate with anybody else except those three people that they are with and that is a a, a gossip click there is nobody they have not finished in the church nobody from the pastor to the toilet they have finished everybody in that their small click and they are doing it against the body and all of them will be tested by fire so whether it's gossip in the name of intercession you know there are people that gossip and they call it intercession say let, let let's be praying for the church it's we are an intercessory group we are praying but that thing they call prayer is gossip when they finish talking they don't even pray they'll finish and go but they will gather to pray there are people like that in the church and your works will be tested by fire even your talk talk will be tested by fire that's why i say all the words that proceed out of your mouth must be to the edifying let your words be seasoned with salt let your word minister grace i'm teaching here i'm teaching here yeah you are assigned to go for evangelism you use it to go for business when you came back you said i didn't find him you didn't even go it will be tested with fire there are many things people do in the church they are not even aware that it's on record the church is jesus's property so everything that happens inside the church jesus is taking record and he will either reward or destroy it so we've got to be careful friends we've got to be careful with what we do in the body of christ am i teaching here we've got to be careful what we do in the body of christ we've got to be very careful because this salvation we must make sure we maximize everything that christ has given to us i didn't hear your amen. amen that's why nobody in the church should be a, a general overseer you know there are some people in the church they are general overseers you ask them which department are you all they are not in any they are general overseers you shouldn't be a general you must be localized somewhere contributing to the overall development of the body the bible said by that which every joint supplies so every joint must supply are we together here we are no more talking salvation now we are talking reward because we are saved is that true are we saved so what is the next thing reward that's what we're dealing with now how do we live out lives that will give us rewards that will make us happy in the sight of god your works will be judged though you you will not be judged by your works the judgment that you will have been judged christ has been judged but your works will be judged it's very important philippians chapter 2 verse 12 wherefore my beloved as you have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling walk out not walk for walk out not walk for the thing you walk out is the thing that is already inside you walk out your salvation that is now that you are saved let there be fruits of salvation let there be products of salvation for it is god next verse for it is god which walketh in you but to will and to do of his good pleasure what he's saying is that god in you that saved you 
is working that's the present tense of salvation god is working in you creating in you appetite and desires that make you produce fruit to himself suddenly you have desire for evangelism suddenly you have desire to be in the choir suddenly you have desire to support tv broadcast suddenly you have a desire to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray now all those desires it is god that is working those desires in you so don't put them down when those desires come know that god is at work corporate what did i say corporate those are desires it's no more satan satan has no hand anymore it is now god at work somebody say god is at work in me you know a sister does something wrong to you instead of keeping malice a desire to apologize to her begins to rise inside you and then as you're planning to she is the one that offended you she did you wrong but the nature of christ in you does not wait for the person that offend you to apologize the nature of christ is always about you making peace so as the desire of god begins to rise inside you to go to her and make peace then a sister just said "Sai, if i am the one that sister did that kind of thing to even if she come to apologize i will give her a slap she can't go free i will give her a clean slap now that desire that god was working in you by the careless statement of a sister she has shut the desire down and god cannot fight with you god will not strive he will cool down and wait for another moment to start working it out and that sister is happy she doesn't know that she has she has fought the work of god in the life of another sister just carelessly if it is me if it is you are you still you it is no longer i it's christ that lives in me we're in this house So God is working desires in you. Let me ask you, be honest with me. How many of you have had some godly desires rising within you and then you ignore them? Let me see your hands up. That was God at work. And how many of you have had godly desires rising within you and somebody discouraged you? That was God at work, but you allow people. But as you grow in knowledge and as you grow in grace, you begin to find out that those desires will begin to find expression. Am I teaching good? Yeah. Yeah. And it's good to know because acknowledgement is very critical in spiritual growth. I prophesy over this house, you will not be cheated the next time. You will fulfill God's desire in your life. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Somebody shout hallelujah. So already you're born again. Let me ask you a question. Are you born of the spirit? Are you spirit? Are you born of the spirit? Are you spirit? Are you born of the spirit? Are you spirit? So now you have the earnest of the spirit in you. Now because you are born of the spirit, it means you have love, joy, peace, long suffering. It means you have them in you already. Because if you are born of the spirit, those are the fruit of the spirit. Those are the fruit. Those are the outcome of that spiritual birth that took place in you love joy peace long suffering gentleness meekness temperance kindness then he said the works of the flesh you are not in the flesh so you don't have the works of the flesh you are born of the spirit so you have the fruit of the spirit are we together here yeah the flesh is dead you are alive to the spirit you're born of the spirit you are a son of the spirit and the Holy Ghost will never leave nor forsake you. You are condemned in the hands of the Holy Ghost. And he will be with you for how long? He will be with you forever. Can somebody shout hallelujah? So now you have received the anointing of God inside you. The book of 1 John chapter 2 verse 20 has a round up. But you have an unction from the Holy One. And you know some things. How many things do you know? Somebody shout in my inside. Right now. I know all things i cannot be confused say i am born of the spirit therefore i am led of the spirit say i am born of the spirit therefore i walk in the spirit say i am born of the spirit therefore 
I live in the spirit. So you see, because you are born of the spirit, you don't try to live in the spirit. You live in the spirit. You walk in the spirit. You are led by the spirit. Because you are born of the spirit. You don't have to try to be spiritual. You know, some people try to make you feel that they are spiritual. When they come around you, That brother is spiritual. Say, brother, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> that is not spirit. That's carnality. People that are in the spirit don't try to be. Even when they are laughing, they're in the spirit. Even when they fall on the ground, they're in the spirit. Even when they're in the swimming pool, swimming, they're in the spirit. Are we together here? Even when they crack jokes and they laugh. Spirituality doesn't mean you are not laughing. There are people that think spirituality means you don't laugh. How many of you have seen them? Thank you, Lord. When you crack, just say, please, 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 I'm in the spirit. <laughs> when you laugh, they tell you, hey, don't be carnal. These are spiritual moments. Amen. Bless you. They don't crack jokes. They are too serious for righteousness. <laughs> Some of you don't crack jokes. And you wonder me with all my anointing. In the height of teaching like this. When the anointing is flowing like fire. I will stop and crack joke. And all of us will laugh. Can't you see that when you even make people laugh. And when you laugh yourself. It means you are very anointed. Rejoice again I say. Today I release joy in this house. That amen is not a joyful amen. I release joy in this house. Anything that took away your joy, anything that stole your joy, I break that hold off you and I release your joy now. Somebody shout, I rejoice. Because I am born of the spirit. I am loved by God. Amen. I want to see you stand on your feet and shout joy. What is the fruit of the spirit? Love, joy, peace. So a man that is in the spirit, what are the kind of things that should be happening around him? Joy, peace, love, gentleness, meekness, kindness. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be out of the ordinary that you are kind. You know there are some people, when they finally show you kindness, you must suspect them. Because it's unlike them. You know what I mean? It's unlike them. They are not gentle. They are not kind. So any day they show you kindness, you need to check what's wrong. Because it's not like them. Christians should be the kindest people on the planet. Are we together here? You know, sometimes when I, when I fly abroad and then I come across some of these polite white men, they may not even be Christians, but they are very kind. You know? the aircraft touches down and then you're trying to grab your box they will pick your box and give you and if you look like you're in a hurry to go they will step aside even though they're in front of you and tell you you can go that's kindness some of us don't have that kind of thing it's survival of the fittest <laughs> it, it, boom, boom, boom. the elbow is so trained when they just do it like this you feel it they don't even have to push it but it has been trained by virtue of exercise They've been doing it since they were born. <laughs> the thing is sharp like razor blade. <laughs> they don't even have to do it too much. <laughs> you see people clearing for them. You wonder why are they clearing? Something is touching them. <laughs> Touch your neighbor. Say be kind. Be kind. Be kind. Bible says be tender. Be tender hearted. Kind to one another. Amen. The Bible says in her mouth is the law of kindness. As believers, we've got to be kind. Kind to one another. Let's not be unkind. Don't make comments about people you have not confirmed. When you hear something about brethren, don't carry it. Don't carry it forward. You understand what I'm saying? Don't carry it forward. Until you confirm. Then when you confirm, and that is if you have time to go through the confirmatory stages. Because sometimes it's only jobless people that go around confirming gossip. 
people that are very busy don't have time to confirm gossip when they hear it it dies in their ear they proceed because they are too focused they're in a hurry only jobless visionless confused futureless <laughs> only people that don't have a future have time to be confirming gossip i had this is it true how is it true how far where can we confirm it you know get work amen people that are forthright and focused and are, are persuaded about where they're going they don't have time for careless stuff amen i said amen we are a people of joy we are born of the spirit we walk in the spirit somebody shout i'm born of the spirit i walk in the spirit i live in the spirit somebody shout i live in the spirit i walk in the spirit i am led by the spirit somebody shout i am led by the spirit can i hear you shout it louder i am led by the spirit i decree as your right hand is lifted up from today every step will be led by the spirit you will not make wrong decisions in the place of purpose in the place of productivity in the mighty name of jesus your steps will be ordered by the holy ghost into the best of god into the plan of god into the purpose of god anywhere you are not supposed to be by the plan of god your legs will not go there your steps will not take you there in the mighty name of jesus because you are born of the spirit you will live out the full potentials of the spirit you are a man that is born of god therefore you are like the wind nobody can tell where you're coming from nobody can tell where you're going to they cannot predict your future they cannot block your destiny therefore i decree by the power of the holy ghost wherever people see you they will only hear your sound they will only hear your sound they will only hear the testimonies they will only hear the good reports they will only hear the good reports but they cannot tell where you're coming from and they cannot tell where you're going to because you are born of god in the name of jesus it is well with you the remaining days of your life on this earth i decree you will live profitably for the kingdom of god you will live productively for the kingdom of god you will live profitably for the kingdom of god the remaining days of your life on earth your life will be counted in the kingdom your impact will be felt in the kingdom in the mighty name of jesus thank you my father thank you my father and i decree tonight anyone watching my television on the internet or in this house who is not well physically i command your body be healed your health be corrected your health be corrected your body be corrected in the name of jesus